Good morning, everyone. Great video there marking the one year anniversary of COVID-19 and the resiliency across our sectors. My name is Dakota Brazer and I am Minister McLeod, Senior Communications Advisor and Press Secretary. Thank you for joining us this morning. We are also joined by Aaron Benjamin, the President and CEO of Canada Live, Amanda Power, the Executive Director of Unison Beloved Fund, and Juno nominated artist and advocate for the sector, Miranda Mulland. Following the announcement, we will be taking questions from the media. If you have a question, please put your name and outlet in the chat bar on the side, and I will unmute you to ask your question. Just a reminder, it will be one question, one follow-up. I will now turn it over to Erin. Thank you so much, Dakota. It's great to be here. Uh, my name is Erin Benjamin, and I am President and CEO of the Canadian Live Music Association. It's a pleasure for me to be able to do, introduce someone uh, who you all know, she has many things. She is the Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries. And yes, she's the MPP for Nepean. And as she is about to demonstrate, she is a true champion of Ontario's artists and live music industry. Please welcome Minister Lisa McLeod. Thanks so much, Erin. And thank you for your leadership and uh, being such a champion this past year that's been so difficult. As uh, Dakota mentioned, today marks the one year anniversary of the pandemic and its impact on the sectors that I represent. They were hit first, they were hit hardest, and uh, they will take the longest to recover. Um, today, obviously, we talk a lot about um, our, our strength and resiliency as uh, Ontarians uh, and as Canadians throughout this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, but uh, no more have I seen the strength and resiliency than I have seen in the sectors that I have been privileged over the past year and a half to represent. Um, our sectors, as I said, were hit first, they were hit hardest, and they will take the longest to recover. And those that will have to take the length, the longest length to recover will be our live music sector uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, it's, it's almost impossible uh, to socially gather at this point in time. Uh, and there are so many restrictions as a result of that. Um, we have supported the music sector over the past year and a half. We, we rolled out a modernized Ontario Music Investment Fund. We uh, so continue to support festivals and events through our Celebrate and Reconnect programs in order to make sure that we have strong infrastructure for live music and festivals and events in a post-pandemic. We also moved to digital content and supported efforts like Ontario.Live and Music Together so that there would be an opportunity for musicians to perform, particularly early in the pandemic, from the safety of their own home while uh, being able to uh, sell tickets and merchandise and, and get that level of support but it's clear we need to do much more. Uh, and today's announcement is, uh, is about not only looking at stabilizing the sector, it's also about preparing and planning for post COVID-19 and making sure Ontario is a world leader when it comes to music across the great uh, country that we live in, but uh, throughout the world. And that's why today I'm pleased to be investing $500,000 to Canadian Live Music Association to embark on a journey over the next while, particularly as we lead up to the Juno's 50th anniversary, to ensure that Ontario is known for music cities across this great province. We want to make sure that the Ottawa's, the Sarnia's, the Sault Ste. Marie's, the Windsor's, the Essex, the London's, the Toronto's are known as vibrant music cities where musicians and artists are welcomed and encouraged. Um, we also know that many of these musicians have uh, lost their livelihoods. Uh, they lost their income effectively March the 12th, 2020. And I've been watching a group over the past year that I have admired immensely. Uh, it's called the Unison Benevolent Fund. The Unison Benevolent Fund uh, has supported artists through two different scenarios, let's say. The first is they were providing much needed financial assistance to those who require it the most. The second, which is also near and dear to my heart, is the mental health component of being there with Morneau and Chappelle to support these artists who uh, may have serious questions about why they have been placed in this situation during this pandemic and who need that mental health support. So today I am delighted, I am grateful to be here with Amanda uh, to announce the Ontario government for the first time in the history 
of our province, and I think probably for the first time in the history of this country, will be investing $2 million into the Unison Benevolent Fund to support those artists who have been hard hit. Make no mistake, this past year has been a challenge. Many of us on this call have been on calls together crying, wondering how are we going to get out of this pandemic? And I can tell you, as the one year mark has been met, we are now optimistic for a post COVID-19 reality, one that includes music, the arts, culture and sport. And of course, as my other Ministry of Tourism, uh, welcoming people back when it's safe to do so. We are turning the corner, uh, we have more to do, but today's announcement is to make sure that those artists that are out there creating today know that their government and the Unison Benevolent Fund and Canadian Live Music are all there to support them. So with that, uh, I wanna say thank you to everyone who has made this possible. And I wanna say thank you to Amanda for the work that uh, she's doing uh, in order to make a real difference in the lives of so many musicians. Uh, Amanda, may I turn it over to you? Yes, thank you um, and good morning, Minister McLeod. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of this very exciting announcement today. Um, on behalf of the Unison Fund Board of Directors, our staff and everyone in the Canadian music community, we support, thank you. Thank you for this incredibly generous support of $2 million. Thank you for believing in the importance and value of music and our industry. And thank you for your recognition of Unison as the charitable organization that is here to support musicians and industry workers who need help, both financially and with counseling services. Since the pandemic broke 12 months ago, the Unison Fund has received a 3,021% increase in applications for emergency financial aid and an overwhelming 208% increase in urgent mental health crisis intervention calls. It's clear the pandemic has taken a financial and mental toll on our music community. And now, thanks to the support of the Government of Ontario, Unison can continue to be there for music makers in their greatest time of need. The COVID-19 pandemic is far from over. The music industry is a very long ways away from returning to any level of pre-COVID normalcy and it will take our industry many more years to fully recover. As a province and as a country, we love music. We love this industry. And we are so grateful to everyone for their support to date. We urgently continue to encourage all music lovers to help the impacted music industry workers with continued support and appreciation for their art. I'd now like to introduce Miranda Mulholland, an incredible artist and a dear friend of the Unison Benevolent Fund. Thanks, Amanda. Minister, the band's back together. <laughs> um, as an artist, uh, to say I'm overjoyed about this government financial support is an understatement. Um, it's a lifeline, but it's also an acknowledgement of the importance of music to the social and the economic fabric of our province. Um, from all of our conversations, Minister, I, I know that you clearly mastered the principles of the Music City framework. Uh, the Music City's blueprint can be used to rebuild, to boost tourism, and bring our communities together when it's safe to do so. Music-friendly cities and musician-friendly cities make Ontario better. The government's financial support underscores the indispensable role that Unison plays in our music ecosystem. Unison is truly Canada's music industry charity. Uh, Unison provides emergency financial support to industry members in crisis, as well as you mentioned, 24 seven free mental health counseling. And you know, as we mark a year without live music as we know it, this organization has had, and, and thanks to your support, will continue to have a crucial role in making sure that no one falls through the cracks. So thank you so much. And I'm gonna turn it over to our fearless leader, CLMA, Aaron Benjamin. Thank you. Miranda, uh, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Minister. And I speak today as the President and CEO of the Canadian Live Music Association, but also as a very, very proud board member of the Unison Fund. Um, and indeed, it was a year ago today that I was on my way out the door to the Junos with my suitcase in my hand, only to be turned around before I got to the end of my driveway by its cancellation and the realization that our lives in this industry uh, were about to change forever. Remarkably, this year of turmoil and chaos and sadness and loss have uncovered in many of us gears that we didn't know we had, that giving us the ability to shift into some kind of new level of resolve where we've realized that we're capable of the kind of resilience that we never knew we would need. 
Um, it's been through this difficult process that we've come to work so closely with Minister McLeod and her team and the government of Ontario. From day one, this minister signaled her intent not only to support this industry, but to learn, to lean in and to lead all of us toward whatever was coming next. Today, we've been given the opportunity to take a breath and think about how we can, in our current context, retrench the power, the immense value of live music in our post-COVID futures, to leverage the Music Cities framework and to inspire communities across the province to work with us and our local music industries to support the rebuild and recovery, not just of our economy, but of our social and cultural lives as Ontarians. One year into this pandemic, I am so pleased to be able to be here today to say thank you to each and every artist and each and every live music stakeholder in this province and across the country, to each and every member of the public service who have not stopped, and to you, Minister, and your steadfast and remarkable team. Now we fully recognize that today's announcement won't solve all of our problems, but what we have now are additional tools to help us find our way out of this nightmare by supporting artists and industry in need and elevating awareness of the potential live music represents on the ground level that will ultimately become a strategic roadmap that will see our live music industry become a cornerstone of innovative economic and tourism development. Minister, you and I have shared stories, we have shared hardship, and yes, we have shared tears together and there will probably be more. The success of today's announcement, I think it'll be measured in many ways, including that day. And that day is coming when we will stand together on a field in front of a festival stage or sit side by side in a live music venue and rejoice in the shared experience of an incredible performance by an amazing artist surrounded by our community who will have fought this virus back with their fierce passion and commitment to changing lives with live music. So minister, thank you for your support, for your unflagging leadership that has brought us to today by giving us hope for tomorrow. It couldn't have come at a better time for both Unison and our live music industry. It will make a significant difference. Thank you so much. More tears, back to you. <laughs> you do this to me every time. Um, yeah, so I, I just want to say to the media, um, before we take questions, um, the relationships that's been, that have been built here um, started early on when I was first appointed. Um, and uh, Aaron and, and Miranda in particular, you know, were very gracious in, in showing me the ropes. And when the pandemic hit, um, most, most of the leaders in our sectors have my cell phone number and uh, know to catch me at around 6.30 in the morning when I wake up. And, uh, and we've had, um, so just to give you context, uh, and I normally wouldn't do this in a press conference, um, the sectors that I represented shuttered a year ago and have been on an emotional roller coaster for a year. And we have all become very close as a result of that and trying to find solutions and um, recognizing we were first and foremost in a, uh, you know, a health crisis, we all quickly recognized too, we were also in an economic and social crisis. And uh, so when we get emotional, it's because we know, especially with the unison money, um, that, that that might save someone's life. And so uh, so today, I, I, I could have announced a whole bunch of different things, but I think today is, uh, this one's about, about hope and um, about building back better and stronger but at the same time, recognizing at a very grassroots organic level that there's people we need to support. So uh, again, I apologize for being a bit emotional, but uh, I'll turn it over to you, Dakota, um, to do what you do best. Thank you, Minister, and thank you, everyone. Just as a reminder, if you do have a question, we just ask that you put your name and outlet in the chat bar on the side, and I will unmute you to ask your question. Minister, your first question comes from Karen at Billboard Magazine. Karen, I have unmuted you. You'll have to accept on your end. And there you are. Got it. Um, it actually brought tears to my eyes too, especially the uh, unison announcement. So I have a question for uh, Minister McLeod and for Aaron. Uh, for the minister, can you um, be a bit more clear? You said it's the first time 
in Ontario and perhaps Canada that you've what made a donation to a charity? Um, no, you- this is this is the first time Unison actually informed me of this uh, just uh, two days ago that this is the first time Unison is receiving uh, government support, particularly this amount. So Unison uh, in the past year, and I'll have Amanda maybe speak to that and then, and then Aaron, um, but uh, they raised a $2.3 million. So this is almost doubling that investment um, in order to get money into the hands of artists, but at the same time, and probably even equally, or if not more important, getting that mental health support to them um, so that they know that they're not alone, that they can work through their anxiety, through the depression, um, it be, put things into perspective and have that level of support. And I'll be perfectly honest, as uh, the minister, of, uh, I, I, I have help and I've been very clear about that. And I just, I needed to make sure that our sectors were getting that help as well. So Amanda, you may want to comment more on the financials and then uh, and then Aaron. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I was confused. I wasn't sure it, what the first time was, if it was government giving to a charity, but it's the recipient, Unison, having not received money from the government. Yeah, I just want to be clear on that. And um, Aaron, I, can you be a bit more specific on um, how you plan to sort of allocate these funds specifically for the industry, the live industry? Um, Karen, I'll certainly be able to talk to you more as time goes on here. Uh, but our plan ultimately, I think, is to develop a music city strategy for the province and integrate as many cities and towns and communities as we can through the process. Okay. And, and, and just on that, uh, Karen, what one of the things is obviously we want with the Junos coming home uh, for their 50th, we want to have a great legacy. And the second part of this is um, we're actually going to work with the, the industry to put them in front of all of the municipal heads of council um, at the appropriate time so we can actually have a template. So all of this isn't just about money. It's about bylaws, too. Um, it's about supporting venues. Uh, it's about permitting and ticketing and all that sort of stuff. So um, that's so that's what we want to make sure that we're supporting Canadian live music and that it doesn't matter how big or small your community is, that you, you can feel like you're going to be part of this uh, vibrant, vibrant live music scene. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Karen. Thank Thank you very much. Just as a reminder, if you do have a question, if you could put your name and outlet in the chat bar on the side, and I can unmute you to ask your question. We'll give it about 30 seconds here. Minister, your next question comes from Kate at CBC. Kate, I have unmuted you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Minister. Um, I guess my question is to you and Aaron both as you're here locally in Ottawa. Um, you know, we're heading, the summer is just always such a busy live scene. Do you have any sense that uh, people here will be able to do anything? Thing? Or, you know, are there ways that you could try to, 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 this is more to you, Minister, that you'll be pushing to make those things happen? I don't know, you know, testing uh, ahead of time, rapid testing and the like? Yeah, so thanks very much for the question. So um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Cabinet uh, had, uh, appointed me to uh, look at seasonal reopenings because so many of my sectors um, have been shuttered, many of them for a year, like live music, um, like our attractions, like Calypso Theme Park. Uh, so we're actively working on what a reopening strategy will look like and how that will look. Um, that work will be done in consultation with uh, Municipal Affairs and Housing, um, Economic Development and Trade, as well as with the Ministry of Health. So uh, we continue to look at that. I know that the modeling, I've been speaking uh, to Dr. Steiny Brown, he alluded to it yesterday with his projections, that our behavior in the next couple of weeks will determine what type of summer we have. And so I think as we get more people vaccinated, as we get the uh, variants of concern um, under control and we stop the spread of COVID-19, we might be in a good position um, late, late summer, early fall. Uh, but I think it is far too early to be able to tell uh, where we will be on, on that. So we will continue in the ministry to um, engage the live sector and our festivals and events um, to support them for, at the moment, drive in and drive through, as well as digital and virtual um, uh, uh, experiences. Um, and and we'll, we'll continue to, to look at it. You know, typically how the process works, Kate, um, is, uh, you know, cabinet will meet on the Wednesday and get a sense of what the public health is looking like. And then we'll meet again on, on Friday uh, and then really get a sense of what the following week will be uh, based on a number of uh, different things. That's ICU capacity, hospital capacity, uh, what the numbers are, um, what we're hearing from the local public medical officers of health. So Dr. Etches will be uh, um, very important in that conversation as well. 
So uh, Aaron, would you like to add anything? Oh, I would just add that, you know, we're, we're anxious to work with government to develop that plan, whatever that plan is, so that we can have markers to, you know, it's not as simple as flipping a switch. When we talk about producing and delivering live events, we need a runway. And I'm, I know that Minister McLeod is very aware of that. So obviously deferring to public health and the government, but I can tell you with certainty that the industry is making plans to be ready when, when we're able to. And uh getting organized to del deliver events at different sizes as necessary, most definitely. Thank you. Kate, do you have a follow-up? Uh, yes, I do. I had just a question for Amanda. You described some really great need there with a percentage increase in applications. I wondered if you could just sort of paint a picture of, of how many people you're hearing from or the stories that you're hearing, you know, and whether and how far this money goes to, to meeting some of those needs. Um, yeah, thank you, Kate. Um, we've, we've had, over the course of 12 months, we've had thousands and thousands of individuals, uh, not only here within the province of Ontario, but right across the country, who are looking for financial support from Unison. Um, the story that is repeated more often than not is they're just trying to pay their rent. They're trying to keep food on the table. They want to feed their kids. Um, the very basic necessities is what the people in our industry are trying to get through, um, trying to have to get through this pandemic. So we are supporting as best we can with, you know, checks uh, made out directly to the applicant. You know, here's a thousand dollars, here's another thousand dollars. How can we help? Um, and then of course, going back to the counseling and because this takes such a toll on, on an individual that in their, in their immediate families that we're, we're obviously there to support them financially, but it's also for the emotional and the mental counseling as well. And, and really trying to engage with our community that it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to reach out and, and getting individuals to, to call the 1855 number to get that assistance. Um, we really have a very strong focus on that as well as the financial assistance. Amanda, why don't you uh, read out the 1855 number again? It's 1-855-9-UNISON, U-N-I-S-O-N. Perfect, thank you very much. Just a reminder, if you do have a question to please put your name and outlet in the chat bar on the side and I can unmute you to ask your question. If we have no further questions, Minister, I'll turn it back over to you for some closing remarks. Okay, well, listen, thanks everyone uh, for joining us. I know we had a, a number of uh, media, so if you wanna do a follow-up, uh, we'd be happy to, uh, to put you in touch with one of these fine and strong and fierce women uh, that are leading the live music scene. Uh, I'll just conclude by this. Uh, every dollar that this ministry invests into a festival or event that supports the live music sector, we receive $21 into that community back. Um, so when you think about a blues fest or a jazz fest or um, you know any, anything across the province, uh, that, that is an economic economic driver that creates tens of thousands of jobs. Uh, the culture um, industry in Ontario represents about $26 billion. So that's, that's a lot of money. It's a, it's a major contributor. And, uh, and it's one that we want to see get back up on its feet. So we're, we're absolutely committed uh, to working with uh, all of the organizations here today, Unison, of course, uh, Canadian Live Music, uh, the Canadian Music Publishers and Music Canada, as well as Karis, um, to, to really uh, rebound, um, but rebound bigger and better and uh, make sure that we are, um, we are the talk of the international uh, industry and uh, that people will want to play in our venues but also that uh, they will find the next Justin Bieber, the next Drake, the next Shawn Mendes, the next Avril Lavigne, the next Alanis Morissette uh, right here at home. So with that, uh, thank you. For, or I should actually say the next Miranda Mulholland because uh, she's Juno nominated and I had the opportunity at one point uh, to play with her and her band. Um, she carried the day, of course, but uh, we had a great time. So uh, to all of you, thank you very much. And I look forward um, when it's safe to do so to uh, join you at a concert. Thank you. Thanks very much for joining everyone today. Have a good day.